In the hilly neighborhood of Sunset Heights, historic homes line the streets just a stone's throw from Mexico. It's here that one of El Paso's most renowned artists calls home, and also so much more. Separated only by the trolley that runs through, Hal Marcus has developed a compound of sorts, from studio to home to art gallery. Well, let me show you around. Wow. We have a hundred different local artists in our gallery. This isn't just all about you in here. Oh no, there's a hundred different artists. We're the only gallery in, in El Paso that deals in early Texas, early El Paso art. And the interesting thing about it is that I grew up in a household where we had no art at all. So I started teaching my parents and teaching my community basically about the beauty of art and art history of our own community. The influence of Mexican culture in Hal's work is portrayed through rich tones and vibrant shades of color. Growing up, art and music weren't prevalent in his household. Instead, Hal drew inspiration from his father's grocery store, a place that would later help create one of his greatest works. This piece here, it's called the Mercado Juarez. This is what put me on a map. I had gone to Europe as a, a teenager in my, uh, in my early 20s, and I went and saw Leonardo da Vinci, I went to see the Sistine Chapel, I went and saw Van Gogh, I went and saw Rembrandt, masterpieces. And I said, I'm gonna come back to El Paso and paint the most beautiful mural that I can ever imagine and I decided to do it on the theme of the Juarez Market because my grandmother as a child, when I was one years old until I was 10 years old, would take me to Juarez two or three times a week to buy fruits and vegetables for my father's grocery store. And we would come across the border with cantaloupes, watermelons, mangoes, lemons, and I was getting the tasting it. I was learning about the color. I was learning about the commerce. And, and so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to paint the market. Back in his home studio, he channels his inner peace and tranquility. Hal says painting is an experience that comes from within, listening and learning from the words and styles of artists that came before him. What do you think about when you paint? You know, it's kind of like meditation, you know? I mean, it's, I'm all over the universe when I do it. I tell artists it's all about listening to the inner voice. You know, when you're, when you're painting, you know, you say yes or no, maybe so, green, no, yellow, no, get rid of it, do it again. I have paintings of all my mentors. I have, you know, Van Gogh and Diego Rivera, and I have Matisse and Picasso, and they're all looking at me. And sometimes I'll do a stroke or a brush and like Matisse will be jealous. He'll say, oh my God. You're so lucky because you're alive and I'm dead. I mean, these are like mentors. These are like my teachers since I never really went to college. These are like my teachers. You know, it, it's a tradition and it lives on, you know, throughout time. We're just a, a continuum of, of art and beauty. A lot of inspiration here for an artist. Yeah, home. well, you'll see in my paintings, you'll see a lot of rooftops. It seems Hal Marcus, the son of a hardworking grocer, found art in a place where not many believed he could. He cemented himself as one of El Paso's greats, and his gallery is surrounded with others sharing this same belief. You see, each time Hal dips his brush and begins to paint, he's not just creating a piece of art, he's sharing the beauty of life on the border with others, something that you can't put a price tag on. You know, an artist isn't only an artist when they paint. I'm a, being an artist when I'm talking to you right now. I'm an artist when I'm walking down the street. I'm an artist when I'm pouring a cup of tea. I, I think that whatever it is that you're doing, you try to give it your all. You try to be as creative as, as possible to communicate. 
It's not just sitting down painting pictures, it's the, it's the big picture. We need to educate people to the beauty of, of this region. I think that the biculturalism in, in, in this part of the world is very unique and very beautiful, and there hasn't been that much written about it or, or uh, published about it. You know, so if I don't do it, who's gonna do it, you know? And uh, I feel that we have a pocket of energy here that, that's, that's sacred and beautiful, and uh, I'm a part of it. And, and so it's our job to, to tell it to the masses.